they actually found a lot of these women who did indeed live with the Chinese men in the Chinese parts of Sydney and asked them about this. They didn't believe the women, of course, when they actually told them, tried to answer their questions. They had their own ideas about this. But here we have this conversation, for example, one of the commissions. Do you not think opium is a great evil? Ellen, no, I don't think so. <laughs> a woman who smokes opium always has got her senses about it, but a woman who drinks is not. Do you not consider opium smoke a great evil? The question not having been properly answered, he asks it again. <laughs> well, it is in one way, I suppose. It's right enough in another way. Another question. Do you not think it's a very evil habit? <laughs> Margaret, everyone to their fancy. <laughs> Minnie, I love these 19th century names. Margaret, Minnie, Ellen, Adelaide. It has no more effect upon me than an ordinary effect. That's very strange, says the commissioner. We have been told, mainly by Christian clergymen, that it, was a, that it has a very decided effect, and then the woman just laughs. The truth was that one of the reasons, one of the main reasons that women were living with the Chinese in Sydney, and there were a number of them, is that they had been, let's put it this way, badly treated, raped perhaps, been uh, by people in the white community, and then expelled. And they found themselves on the street with no place to go and no resources, and the Chinese very often in that area took them in, perhaps for sexual favours, perhaps as part of a closer and more long-lasting relationship. It's hard to tell from this difference. But we notice here how the hypocrisy of Australian society or Sydney society gets projected back onto communities, and that the language of disease and the language of pollution and the language of villainy and evil is one way in which those social anxieties find expression. So my conclusion about all of that um, is not only, you know, pretty interesting doing some research in the archives, um, but that law does this all the time. It forgets its own symbolic structure. It, it prohibits metaphors, and then it forgets that it's a metaphor and literalizes those metaphors. And we have the whole history of drugs in the last century is this constant literalization of a metaphor an attempt to snuff out something which, whose original concern and original anxieties were symbolic in the way that I'm trying to express. And that's what I think is one of the, the most interesting ways of, of um, appreciating what is meant when we talk about the relationship